Hello everyone. In this video, I'd like to talk about predator-prey cycles. Now this is something that comes up at both key stage 3 and 4. And it's very easy to define predator and prey. Predator being an animal that consumes or eats another, quite simply, and prey being the animal that is eaten, the one that is hunted and eaten. But it's important to recognise that the population of predator and prey depend on one another. And you get this very characteristic graph, and that's what I'm going to explain, this, this cycle that you see between predator and prey populations. Now, I've put here two, two big top predators. Well, the lion's certainly a, a top predator in its food chain. Nothing would eat it. And it's one of my, one of my um, favourite uh, of the mammals. And then beneath that, we've got what's called a lynx. One of the big cats, and the lynx eats something called snowshoe hare. And they are the classic example taught when you look at predator-prey relationships because the, the lynx has an almost very limited um, food source. It eats predominantly hare. So the two, when you draw the, their sort of population graph, the one of the predator, the lynx, and the one of the prey, the hare, they do really show this interdependence on one another really nicely. Now, predators and prey do, do have certain adaptations, especially in terms of things like excellent vision, hearing. Um, I mean, prey specifically have things like mimicry that they do. They mimic another particular organism to prevent being eaten. But I'm not going to go into the adaptation so much. More this cycle that we see. So I want to draw... very typical graph that we have and on the bottom on our x-axis if we have let's say time and that would be in years and up the side on the y-axis we have population so let's put in at the top And that would be measured, let's say, in the thousands. There. So we're going to put in prey numbers first. We'll do this in red. And you get something that looks a little bit like this. Now, actually, um, scientists recorded the, the actual populations of Canadian lynx and snowshoe hare over a good number of years. In fact, it's for about each year for, I think, for 75 years by looking at the number of animals caught by fur traders. So there is a very distinct graph, which I'm not going to draw out exactly to scale on here, but I'm going to show the same basic principle. That this is what you'd be expected to appreciate in an exam setting. So in red, what I've drawn here would be a population of hair which in this example is prey now it's this creature here that i've just drawn the arrow to it's that creature there the lynx that is our predator and what we find is that there's a a sort of delay if you like between the two kind of graphs the cycles appear to be out of phase with each other. So a peak in one population is followed later by a peak in another. So it's a little bit like that. So this blue line represents the lynx, or what we're calling a predator in this example. Now, there are a few distinct phases in this graph, or, or stages, rather, in this graph that I want to talk about. So let's put them in place. And in fact, in green, I'm just going to put the numbers for the stages I want to talk about. So number one is here. It's this rise in prey. Number two, the equivalent rise in predators. For number three, I'm looking at the sort of the peak here of the prey number four 
is where this red line on this graph this probably starts to dip and 5 is where this blue line starts to dip. So there are five particular stages that I want to comment on. Now, let's go from the beginning. When there are rather few, very few predators, the prey population can thrive. There's very little competition for resources and that's why the prey number rises. So for number one, if we just analyse this, I'm going to just put certain marks over the graph. For number one, you have very little competition. Between prey and a very low number of predators. So that's why you get a prey population increase. Now, if you look at stage two on this graph, you can see the predator number starts to rise. And that quite clearly is because the prey population has increased. There's more food. So an increase in food is what's caused the predator population to rise. At number three, we can see there's a peak and then it starts to drop off almost and that's because the prey is starting to get eaten so you've got consumption of that prey so a lot of that prey is eaten but more than that we also have competition for resources because there's a greater population of the prey there's greater competition for the limited resources available so some of that prey is is competing with itself. Some of the hares are competing and out-competing one another, leading to a drop in the population. So it's not just eaten, being eaten, but also there's competition. Then we look at stage four. At stage four, you can see there's a decline in the prey and that really links to stage three. Three is the start of that decline. The prey number falls because of competition and because they're being eaten. And then you get number five and five is a drop in the predator number. And that is because now that the prey number is falling, there's less food to eat. There's increased competition between the predators, so increased competition between those lynxes and also, one that some people forget is there's migration. So some of those predators in that population that's recorded would migrate to other areas looking for other sources of food. And that could potentially be a reason why calculated prey numbers appear to be lower. And then the cycle begins again. Now this whole sort of cycle of prey rise, predator rise, prey fall, predator fall. You can see, as I said before, they're out of sync with one another and they give what are called cyclic fluctuations. Because they rise and fall and rise and fall, we call that cyclic fluctuation. So to be clear, fluctuations are these little kind of dips that you get, these rises and falls, so cyclic fluctuations. That's what we see in predator-prey graphs like this one I've drawn today. Now there are other reasons why population numbers may decline or show these kind of cyclic fluctuations aside from just this interdependent relationship we've seen in this video. I mean I've talked about competition within a species, so intraspecific competition. There may be intraspecific competition as well as interspecific competition. So there may be competition for um, food resources from other, other species. But also things like disease. Disease can massively affect population numbers. So it's worth just considering those. But the purpose of this video was to not just define predator and prey, but to show this predator-prey cycle, this interdependent relationship that you see where one goes up and the other goes up. And then as one goes down, the other goes down. And to talk a little bit more in depth about why you get those rises and falls. Okay, hope that helps.